In the Indian tradition, music follows the voice. The voice is the prime expressive instrument of music. The student learns from the master by copying and repeating. The master is their father, Pandit Jasraj, an accomplished singer of Bombay. Senior pupils of Pandit Jasraj meet for daily practice. The students meet together at the master's call. It may be morning, evening, or very late at night. The mood and concentration for practice are all important. The dilruba is an ancient instrument akin to the sitar and the sarangi. It accompanies or echoes the phrases of the singer. The human voice is the quintessence of all musical instruments. The instruments themselves do not seek any pitch or quality beyond the reach of the human voice. Rather, they echo or evoke the range and emotion of a singer. The students are singing abstract phrases, naming the notes, music derived from the classical raga Bhairav. The phrases progress in complexity and difficulty, but all are related to the central pattern of the raga. This music is not rigid. The music of a raga is not performed so much as discovered. There is a set of notes, or rules and conditions, and within these, the singer recreates the music afresh each time. In his discovery of the music, his awareness and inwardness are heightened. His whole body becomes an expressive instrument. His whole being becomes an extension of the music.
From their involvement in a world of music, Jesraj and his pupils move out into the sounds and swirling currents of the city. Jesraj sings for big public concerts, broadcasts, and recordings. A few decades ago, such music was largely reserved to the courts of princes, the temples, and the rich. Nowadays, a leading singer will meet big public audiences all over India, north and south. unfolds, opens out as the mood deepens. The current of response between the singer and his musicians grows stronger. Until he comes on stage, Jasraj may not yet have decided which raga he will sing. Improvisation is a basic element. The pattern of the raga is set. The tabla holds firm its rhythmic structure. But within these rules, the raga will grow and flower in a different way with each presentation. At its height come the tans, pure abstractions from the basic notes and pattern of the raga, a virtuoso impromptu outpouring by a master musician.
200 miles to the north, Jasraj comes to the small town of Sanand. In this tranquil country setting, he visits from time to time a household that has played a major part in his life of music. In this place abide many of the elements which give strength and continuity to the tradition of India's classical music. The pace and pressure of the city is far away. The Thakur Saab of Sanand was formerly a princely ruler and landowner. Today, in independent India, he is a private citizen, philosopher, musician, and scholar. His holdings are mostly gone. He lives still in the ancient house, once a fortress, that his family has held for 400 years. To this calm and quiet place, Jasraj and his wife make frequent visits. He has sung just now in the city of Ahmedabad, 30 miles away. He will visit his sponsor and teacher, stay in the household for a day or two, and sing again here for his host and a few friends. Some years ago, the Thakur Sab became a sponsor and spiritual guide for Jasraj and his elder brother. Since that time, a close and warm relation links Jasraj to this household. In the living room, friends and colleagues, musicians, the sons and their families come and go. The Thakur Saab, with his tobacco pipe, his friends, his books of philosophy, the business of his remaining farms, leads a full and serene life. <laughs> the Thakur Saab was himself an accomplished musician and composer. Jasraj tells him the raga which he proposes to sing, one which the Thakur Saab has composed in honor of the goddess Kali whose devotee he is. Mahakal Maharani. She is the Shakti or the power of Lord Ma God Ma Mahakal. What is the meaning of Mahakal? Mahakal, the form of God Himself, who is beyond the three tenses past, present, and future. Uh -huh. On one hand, she has got a naked sword, a newly severed head. Uh -huh. Mahakal is to take the blood of demons. Uh -huh. She is the protector of the universe and making the universe free from the fear of evil spirits and demons. Taran Tarini, jinko absolution moksha hai, 
puts his, his merciful and gracious Bhavani, Bhavani, Bhavani. Daily, the Brahmin priest performs a ceremony of worship before the goddess. The small temple is in the main house beside the concert hall. The Thakur Sab has devoted himself to religious philosophy and worship of the goddess. This worship is the foundation of his belief. He meditates upon the power, creative force and goodness of the Divine Mother. The goddess embodies Shakti, the principle of vibrant creative energy. This female principle is one aspect of God, and the goddess who embodies this principle is the consort of God, one of his many forms. Ritual prayers in the ancient Sanskrit language do reverence to her powers, not only as a protecting mother goddess, but in her terrific aspect, the bringer of retribution, the awesome conqueror of evil. The ritual makes use of many tantric symbols, forms and mystical designs which denote the special attributes and powers of Goddess Kali. The friends have come for an evening of music. The style of life has changed, but the pleasure and companionship in music abide. Something more than pleasure the music will do honor to the goddess whose worshiper and devotee is host in this house. <laughs> this is the home of a man who embodies a tradition, the intimate bond between art and religion in Indian life. His love of music and his belief in God are woven together in a single pattern. Music for him is an offering to God, an act of worship. The tampura provides the drone, the basic note of the raga, always present throughout the entire music. It creates a kind of dream, hallucination, and from it, the solo artist drifts deeper and deeper into the music of his own creating. The Thakur Saab, in his youth a gifted musician, has given the form of the raga to be played this evening. Each raga has an inner and an outer face. The outer is its form, the notes, pattern, and rules of its structure. The inner is the mood, the meaning, the profundity and depth discovered within the pattern each time it is sung or played. In the outer face are the techniques for carrying out a search. In the inner face is the search itself for the core the meaning at the heart of the music.
generations of singers and ancestors, listeners and worshippers. The presence of God is acknowledged, embodied in many different forms. The goddess is here, the female creative principle. The past is here, not oppressive, but welcome and familiar. Avenger who protects all mankind, the terrible source of power and creative energy. To her, this music, this occasion is dedicated. And while such music lives, the tradition which gave it birth continues strong despite the changing times.
A song is a framework for worship, not because of its words, like a hymn, but in the actual creating of sound, the music itself. In India, making music is an act of worship. Music, art, religion are pathways for seeking and exploring into the true nature of man and of all created things. The temple of the goddess Parbati on a hill above the city of Pune in western India. One of India's great singers often comes here with his family to enjoy the morning freshness before the day turns hot. His name is Bhim Sen Joshi. Stretching below him is the region of the old Maratha kingdoms. Tradition and history are part of his life because they are part of his music, and music is his life. In India, tradition is everywhere, and modern life is everywhere, and so is the interplay between them. Bhim Sen Joshi has a footing in both worlds, but the strength of his music comes from a tradition. Though the tradition is ancient, it is vigorous and alive. In his city, the inheritance of tradition and history are strong. Nonetheless, Pune, the Marathi capital, has a million people, thriving industries, scientific research, a lively university. Bhim Sen Joshi is a classical singer. He sings for radio, recordings, big public concerts, and sometimes small, intimate concerts in private households. In traditional style, he is accompanied by the tampura, a subtle and hypnotic drone, the unceasing keynote of any classical raga, whether performed by the human voice or a musical instrument. The tabla, tampura, and harmonium support the singer. There is no harmony, only a solo line of melody. All of India's classical music is based upon the human voice. Solo instruments imitate the singer's range of tones and emotions. The raga form is the essence of Indian classical music. The raga is a structure within which the musician explores and recreates a certain emotion or mood. It is not a set performance, but a discovery within a framework. The singer with his whole being embodies the mood and spirit of the particular raga. is the time scale, which is the rhythmic base of every raga. The approach to this music is emotional, intuitive, reflective, an exploration and a seeking. Most ragas are associated with a particular mood or emotion, some with a special hour of day or season of the year. The raga which Bhim Sen is going to sing is linked traditionally with the season of rains. The rains of India are the means of life. They display the power of nature, the mysterious forces which govern the life of man. The rains bring renewal, refreshment and joy. A famous raga associated with the rainy season is called Mia Malhar. It begins with an unaccompanied statement of the raga theme and mood. Then, with rhythm entering, a slow movement follows, a song of devotion, asking God's blessing, mercy and happiness for all mankind. The text closely resembles the Lord's Prayer of Christian worship. Next comes a fast movement, a song of passion and longing. The time of rolling storm clouds and rain is the time of love. The lover, 
separated, far away, thinks of his beloved with despairing loneliness in this season of renewal, passion and sensuous delight.